No. Here you go, you know. And look at the big box. Yeah, it up good. All right. I can do this all day. Let's get started. Oh, shit, show. We are online. Hello, and welcome to the Hey Show. We haven't lost three episodes. Our, <laughs> our souls are crushed right now. <laughs> and we feel just like all of the white belt competitors that we should talk. This show, podcasters could take this show one day. And do a white belt podcast <laughs> episode yeah. on us. Shit talking podcast, white talking yeah. podcast. Oh, oh, look at their settings here. God, what are they doing? <laughs> is, I hope they get better at that. Look at the five point oh. Look at the lighting. Doing? They're using horrible lighting with this. They're using a mic that's on the damn camera. For God's sakes! All right, let's get started. Yeah, we're not professional at all. So, all right, we are going on to our first segment. We are doing news and notes. Uh, this time, we are talking about uh, BJJ stars, Micah. I can't say, ever say his name. Mika. Mika. Oh, wow. I messed up the Gavalo. first name, too. Yes. Uh, he won BJJ Stars in $100,000. So which quite is a prize. Quite a prize. Unstoppable me, right now. A funny side yeah. note is me and Ronnie watched the um, the Portuguese broadcast <laughs> for yeah. probably about two hours. And really? we couldn't figure out why the sound wasn't on. Yeah. So, yeah, eventually <laughs> we went right to the English one, and then we figured that out. But uh, on his way, he beat, uh, beat Leandro Lowe. I'm going to butcher this person's name. I apologize. You're never going to watch this, so it doesn't matter. Mar- Mar- Don't worry, Mar- 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 Oliveira, and Hulk Barbosa. So, any, um, we actually are not going to talk about that event or anything like that because uh, me and Ronnie, I know, watched it for sure. But one of the questions I have for all of you is what are some other rising phenoms you expect to see, you expect to see big things from? Sun Yun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That does not count. No, absolutely not. Well, I mean, you know, the, the matchup that I've been saying is, you know, Tainan and um, Mika. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess they've already fought. I didn't know that. They won. Mika won by yes. an advantage. He is he is on such a tear. It's I don't... If you want to look at up and coming stars, you can't really look at black belts. You got to start looking at the browns and purple belts for up and comers. And even some of the blue belts, even the blue yeah, belt even worlds right now. Belts. I mean, it's huge. Yeah, like, whoever wins those. And then also, if you're talking about up and coming stars, you kind of can't look at the gi people, right? Because they may be up and coming in the gi division, but when we're talking stars, when we're talking people that people talk about, it's just not the gi anymore. So the you guy that look Gordon at, Ryan has right now, I don't know his name. Uh, he was on that Who's Next show, but he just won, like, the ADCC African Trials, I think. And oh, wow. wow. Something else, but I guess he's just massive, and he's a monster. Uh, he just won two big events, and I think he's a blue belt, you know? So, like, it's almost the belts don't even matter anymore. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, they do in the gi, unfortunately, still, because of the grip battles and things like that. But, man, in no gi, it really doesn't matter what your rank is. Um but I would like to see the rematch with Mika and yeah. Tainan because when I watched it, you know, people are like, Mika murdered Tainan. And I was I watched the video and I, I think Mika did great because Mika was a brown belt that fought Tainan as a black belt. Um, and it was like he did. He did pass the guard almost and got the guard he got the advantage for the guard pass. But uh, it was a good match, but I don't think it was a beating. You know, like everyone's right. like, it was a beating. How do you serve somebody a beating and win by one advantage you know to me a beating is you lost 30 to zero right i mean so and it looked like tainan was just not on his game i don't you know like whether that was mika really shutting him down incredibly well it didn't look like tainan was ever trying to get to his game so i would love to see that rematch well the match we watched was uh leandro low mm-hmm. and then he actually pulled out close guard and got almost got a sweep from that and that's yeah. actually won by one advantage again Again, we were watching the Portuguese broadcast, yeah. so we did not know that was going on, and yeah. we actually thought that Low was winning. Yeah. And so, uh, if, in the end, Ryan's like, "Let's not turn this off because we never <laughs> know if there's going to be some fuckery going on." So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go on to the next thing. So, UFC 274 uh, just happened. Uh, the first one was that we wanted to go over was Michael Chandler's kick, and wow. it's Tony Tony Dunn. Yeah. He's definitely not he's saying he's done. He's not, no. He's actually said that, um, I actually just saw a tweet from him today, and it said that yeah. I'm thinking about going back to 170. He's, I I feel like uh, when uh, um, in UFC or in MMA in general, you're not like, 
there's a there's a couple things. You're not done, but you can be like, I'm done chasing a belt. Oh, absolutely. He, he yeah. is he is done chasing a belt. He's never gonna win that belt. But he is um, definitely done, or or he's not done in the sport yet because he still has to be a gatekeeper. And gatekeepers aren't like, uh, in, in for MMA, they're not a bad thing. It's a good thing to judge where your level is. Like when this up and comer beats this gatekeeper, like oh okay, that that lets the people that don't know it that well is like oh I know who that is and he beat him. Right. So then the MMA math makes sense to him. To be fair to Tony in that match though, he really kind of dominated Michael Chandler in the first round, and he kind of really just got caught with a really unpredictable move. I mean, who saw that front kick up the middle? He's gonna punt his head off his neck like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It was well placed. I, I gotta say, I think I think Tony still has some in him. Yeah, he definitely does. I mean, Anderson Silva, what Lyoto Machida, yeah. those are the two front kicks that always come to mind. And yeah. now this one's definitely gonna come to mind. Yeah, yeah, this one was nasty. I think there has to be something for the the competitor. Like, it's anything. You don't know when to quit. Like, hell, I've been trying trying to retire for how long now? You know, so it's hard to retire something that you continually yeah, want to do. And I think. There should maybe be a league for that. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like a a a masters we are yeah. masters, and, <laughs> and we are not besmirching any MMA promotion. But like, actually, this weekend, two Iota Machida mm-hmm. got knocked out pretty bad, and then Paul Daly actually announced he was going to retire. He ended up getting the win, getting a knockout. Yeah. But that kind of does seem like a league where you know, hey, we're going to treat you guys with a little bit more respect, yeah. and you know, let you guys go out on your own terms. Kind of like what they're like doing that. with boxing, almost like with or Mike Tyson fought uh, Vander Holyfield again. Was that who yeah. he fought? Yeah. yeah. And that was that was an entertaining match. I mean. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, until I and this must be a crazy story, but uh, some sort of big person in the government died. Anderson Silva was going to fight over the weekend, and then so was um, Floyd Mayweather in Abu Dhabi, I believe. So, I mean, like, this is, you know, just other instances of sure. seeing these legends. Because, let's be honest, just like, if it's pro wrestling or if it's, you know, MMA or jiu-jitsu, you want to see those yeah. older guys continue. Yeah, Damian Maya was on the BJJ Stars yeah. card. So, all right. Uh, now we go back to a little bit more jits. Uh, Charles Oliveira, is, uh, is he just the goat of jits in the cage? He's got to be. I mean, he's got the most submissions in the UFC he continually shows that high level of finishing. I mean, I don't know who you could even argue is when it comes. With him. Yeah, when it comes to finishing, a hundred percent. I mean, he is he's he is very systematic with the submissions. I watched Daniel Cormier's detail on him, and the way he has he's got his uh, he throws the first submission, and he has the second one lined up. He'll go armbar, triangle, and then triangle to Omo Plata, and then Omo Plata coming up, and then starting to chase the back. He's got. He's, he's very systematic with it, which makes him very exciting for submissions. But if we're talking like most dominant jiu-jitsu, that doesn't necessarily mean a finisher. That could be someone that can hold someone right. down. That's true. And, um, well, since Khabib's out, um, you have to start looking at your wrestlers. and even, Islam Makachev. Yeah, I mean, those guys that can dominate and put, put their will on them and keep them down, that's still jiu-jitsu. I mean, it's wrestling, but it's also jiu-jitsu, being able to transition yeah. and hold positions and set up strikes from those positions. Something else I've noticed with Charles Oliveira, too, like, <clears throat> his striking's gotten pretty decent lately, and he'll hit people, he'll knock them to the mat, and mm-hmm. then instead of getting on top and continuing to try to pound him out for the victory, he immediately steps in with the first hook and takes the back right, right. after he knocks him down. He goes straight into jiu-jitsu immediately. Yeah. So, so who wins, Khabib or him? In just a grappling match? In MMA. Uh, I mean, it's so hard to say, man. They're both, so we're they talking, both had great They runs. both will do the same weight class, right? Uh, uh, yeah, all of Aaron fights 155. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm so saying. Yeah. But, uh, the, I mean, I would be intrigued in that match. That would be a good fight. I'd say... They're, they're trying to bring it out, too. Oh, like, yeah. You, that's all they're talking about. That'd be a great fight. I think Oliveira's on an 11-win streak right now or something. Yeah. And, I mean... He beats... He's beat some one, pretty right? top-level mm-hmm. competition, too. Some of the, the same guys can beat. That Khabib's levels beat. thing. Yeah. Some of the same guys can beat, and he's actually beating them, like, faster. So, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I I don't know that's either, but I would like to see that match. I would love to see that. I think, like like you said, I think if, if he fights Islam and beats him, then that that's might make... Questionable. Yeah, that might make that might bring, 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 bring for sure. Dude, I like, think oh, so. Yeah. Now that when's that fight happen? It's not even scheduled. Oh, yet. Okay, but they're talking Abu Dhabi. I think yeah, that, yeah, that's the whatever. Who do you think Dhabi wins that? Is. Islam or Oliver? <sighs> so I know with um, uh, Oliver's striking style, 
he pulls people in and then he works into his clinch. Yep. I don't know how he's going to do against someone that's going to pressure right yeah, into push it. In because he hasn't, I mean, he's fought decent wrestlers, but not a single one of them has wrestled them. Yeah. They, they, they come in and strike first. I, I don't, I'd like to see how he does against someone that pressure wrestles him and completely eliminates his hips. Yeah, I'd like to see his jiu-jitsu versus Islam's wrestling. Yes, kind of, you know? that would be impressive yeah. to see. Is that a technical thing, though, where, like, people just respect his jit so much that they don't pressure into him and stuff like that? <laughs> it might be. Um, I, I think it's... It, it is. It, it is for sure, because they know, like, if I get, take him down, I'm going to have to shut off his hips and keep him flat. And he's also lanky, so someone that's lanky can throw those elbows at weird angles. So even if I'm down here, like the classic uh, Khabib in Islam where they wrap up the legs, they're going to be eating elbows to the head. They're not going to be hard elbows, but elbows are elbows. They hurt. Yeah, they're going to be trying to cut. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, the last question, which um, is kind of a setup question. I'm going to go ahead and let – and I'm going to be a little bit more respectful. Ronnie's going to yell at me if I'm not respectful of this. Uh, Rose Esparza. Was that technical, or was that just like, man, that that's not great? I think they were both just afraid to really commit to engage. That's kind of what I saw. Is one of the strangest uh, women's MMA fights I've ever saw seen because they normally when you watch a women's MMA fight they are attacking 100 percent of the time. It may not be great, or and it may not be technical, but there's always an attacking motion, and they, we didn't see that. Yeah, neither of them wanted to really engage, it felt like. Like, Carla was going for the takedowns occasionally, and she landed a couple, but uh, she just couldn't hold her down, so then there was no offense from her other than the takedown. And then the same thing on the other end with Rose. She was kind of throwing some stand-up, she was cutting some angles and stuff, but then just neither of them really committed. Yeah, I didn't watch the fight. Well, <laughs> I didn't. I would be thankful. I can tell you this. She didn't lose, but the other girl didn't win. <laughs> it, um, something... That's what I saw our post. So, something I saw <laughs> on on um, that somebody was making, and then they, they posted from the rule book, is that defensive wrestling is not scoring. Right, it's aggression. That's fair. And that the person that's still coming forward and trying to take you down is scoring. Is scoring because of the aggression. So and that the was the big. That was the where her team was kind of saying, oh, no, no, we were defending the shots, that's us winning the match. I also no. think... And uh, that's, and that's, unless you're the Tristan's fifth fight at amateur, that <laughs> law <laughs> principle doesn't work. I also think Rose's corner kind of did a bad job, too. They kind of encouraged her, to, made her made her feel like almost like she was doing the right thing instead of being like, no, you know, you can need to get in there and go after this. <laughs> and Whitman was the one that was saying the opposite, right? Yeah. That's what I heard uh, okay. on Twitter. Again, I wasn't watching, okay. so... But I heard that he was the one saying, "No, no, you have to un- undo your hand. You have to let go of your yeah, hands because you're do not something, scoring." You know, I mean, yeah. And this is another case of where if you open up to scoring to where the yeah, the coaches right. can see it, and you don't have to like have it plastered around where the the competitors can see it. Just give it, give the card to the coaches, or tell the coaches, "Hey, this is the score right. right here," and then they bring in that information because then the coaches get to do with it what they want, right? You know? Yeah, there that's, could be some benefit there. I think that's too. actually really. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. That's actually really that would, good. Yeah. Oh wait, so that again, I, I did say that I set that up a little bit. Oh, my pizza's here. <laughs> oh, pizza's here. <laughs> <laughs> just so as that fight, he got so bored that he decided to just go get pizza. Absolutely. So this we actually the Carl. This is the, the Carl. Carla Rose podcast <laughs> so the, the really really nice thing it that is so weird a domino's pizza coupon just came up oh, as soon as they came up dang, but got it. we That's actually awesome. don't need chat for this one right now okay we can actually go on to the next segment and this segment is called why is he a bitch <laughs> <laughs> now that he's gone we can say anything we want we are being held against our will doing this today oh, all yeah. right um it's uh, yeah. oh my god do i need to re-examine my life choices so this is where Michael uh, decides to make them watch really, really boring MMA and jiu-jitsu matches and then give perspective on it. And the question we always ask is, is this really technical or do we straight up need to re-examine our life choices? Okay, so let's go with Ronnie first. Uh, I gave him a task of, I just went to Google, I just Googled it, put it in the Google machine, most boring MMA matches. One of the matches that came up was Izzy and Romero. So, Ronnie, you had some homework? What do you yes. think? Yes. So, Izzy Romero. Um, 
That first round, and I know this has been said before, so I'm repeating this is I'm repeating a joke of what everyone's already said before. It literally looked like two people trying to learn the controls on a, on a controller. It looked like that they were both just moving around, you know, playing with some things, trying to figure it out. Not a lot of engagement. Um, the only thing I saw, in, and it was a theme throughout the whole thing, is Romero had a game plan. And he thought his game plan was working, and he was going to stick with that game plan. I mean, you've seen him in the fifth round. He's, you know, hooping and hollering, raising his hands like he won the fight. And he ends up not getting the decision. And I, I, I agree with the decision. I, I felt like he lost, but I felt like uh, Romero won the first two rounds, and then Izzy won the last five rounds. But Romero's strategy the entire time was, I'm going to bring him seven in. Rounds. Huh? There's seven rounds. I you just couldn't let go. Oh, uh, did I mess three, it up? Yeah, three rounds. Oh, no. yeah, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, this is the longest MMA fight in history. I was trying to be nice and yeah, just true. let you glo- gloss sorry, over. Yeah, sorry. You're doing good. This is the podcast episode three of descriptions. <laughs> uh, so um, his whole strategy was bring Izzy in so he can throw his wild overhand yep. right the mm-hmm. entire time. Yep. All he wanted to do was throw that overhand right. And he would half-ass show some wrestling so that it would bring him in or it would make him think about it and then as soon as Izzy would come in boom huge overhand right but you cannot bring in a sniper you have to sneak up on the sniper so when he's sitting back throwing leg kicks and leaving this knot the size of I'm assuming the size of this pizza yeah the size of this pizza on (laughs) Romero's leg you're going to lose the fight. He is constantly it landing. Good. It does smell good. He's constantly <laughs> landing. He is constantly moving. And he is he has gotten out of every entanglement. Now, we just said that defensive wrestling doesn't win in the fight. That how, that being said, Romero only tried to wrestle twice in five rounds. In five rounds. He definitely got outstruck. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But is, was it a completely boring fight? It, the first couple rounds were rough. Rounds three through five got a little bit better, um, and I can I could say that if I had not watched that fight, I would I be happier for it? Yeah, probably. I would oh. have had more time. Really? Oh, yeah. so you're actually saying I need to reexamine my life choices? Yeah, I do. Not not okay. I I actually thought when I watched the fight for preparation, I thought you were going to say this is technical. I halfway enjoyed it. It, the reason it makes me so mad, and, and I did learn some things from it, but it makes me so mad that I don't know if it was Romero or if it, it was his corner, but no one told him that plan A was not working, it's time to bail. Mm-hmm. Whether they, they said they were telling him that the whole time and he just wouldn't listen, I understand that. I've been a corner man, I know how that works. Um, and, or if they... Um, did not tell him, like, or if they were telling him the whole time, you're winning this fight, you're winning this fight, you're winning this fight, it makes me sick to think that that might have been going on because he obviously was not winning that fight. No, absolutely. All right, Chad and Brandon, I gave you an assignment. Um, it was, and if all of our viewers want to watch this fight and then you can know what we're talking about here, if you put in Dirty Fight BJJ, it will be the first thing that pops up. The okay. guy that got slapped? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I've seen that before. So, actually. oh, all right, sweet. So um, do we, are, are you thinking, hey, there are some technical parts to this, or is this just a complete waste of your time and you need to re-examine your life choices? You know, actually their jiu-jitsu wasn't horrible. No, I didn't think their, so either. Their, their jiu-jitsu wasn't horrible. Uh, the ref was horrible. Uh, she was terrible. The ref was horrible, and whatever event it was was horribly organized, and it was very... <laughs> Confusing. I gotta say, it's not. It's not. It's not a major one. So we're good. Right. We're clear. I gotta what? say, he was throwing some I was pretty. Gonna turn an IBJJF around. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not IBJJF. I don't even know what it was. It looked like a high school gym. Yeah, yeah like literally, the refs guy. like. Uh, I don't nine. know. The crowd's yelling. Okay, two. Oh, two on this side. Okay, two on this side. I gotta say though, like that, that one guy that that ended up getting slapped. He was throwing some pretty aggressive no, leg trips. No, hundred percent. Totally been leg kicks. Look, you know, fight I mean, sports those... is probably not going to watch our podcast. <laughs> but one thing I've learned from them is they're a pretty abusive organization sometimes, and they're very aggressive in what they do. I mean, and he was throwing a leg kick. It wasn't even true. I'm perfectly fine so. with aggressive training, but it's like, it's dude, like... you are kicking and slapping the shit out of your opponents and you're wondering why they're getting upset yeah i mean clearly if you watch the video which i watched it like three times Mm -hmm. the the guy slaps him before the other guy slaps yeah he's like clubbing him hard i mean you can hear it it's like crack 
you know, and then the guy, and I'm not saying that makes it right for the other guy to do and what he did. And this happened multiple times. They stood him up, um, they started again, same thing. He kicked him in the leg, he fell down, he came on top, he clubbed him hard. First of all, why the reset in the triangle? Yeah, it wasn't was, even out of bounds. That was you know? outrageous. You know, so like horrible refing again. Um, you know, confusion, issues, bad refing again. I There's too many refs in the organizations nowadays that have no clue or no experience, and that can get somebody hurt. Yeah. I, I think a I good think ref right. is the, important. I, I think the ref was probably the biggest um, issue. That, we that made a lot of confusion. And then on top of it, yeah, I mean, I get that you want to get the foot sweep for the two points on the initial guard pull. That's smart. Yeah. Um, Do you get it if you touch their foot? Yes, with you your get foot? it, one hundred percent. It's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. But the the kicking and and he's constantly slapping the guy's head the whole match as he's trying to pass. Um, and neither one of them looked bad. I mean, they lit, they they both displayed good jujitsu in different ways. Um, but, you know, it's just getting a little bit frustrating that I've watched the organization do a front rape choke in IBJJF that's illegal. That's doing these constant slapping and hitting and being physical to try to bully your opponent so that they crumble. And, yeah, I get it. It's a fight. It's a fight. Jiu-Jitsu is supposed to be about self-defense. But at the end of the day, it is still a sport, and there's still rules. Yeah. Um, and you need to follow those rules of the sport if you want to get it to the next level. Um, Absolutely. You know, and, and I'm not saying, like, look, make this shit legal, and then I'm fine with it. Right. There should but be it, that gray area. But it it's currently illegal. Mm-hmm. But know, the guy hit that guy, so that guy hitting that guy should have been perfectly fine. Like you said, though, the ref should have just took control of it from the first or second time it happened. So. But, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty wild video. It's entertaining. You should watch it. It reminded me of that time that guy stomped her foot or whatever. At yeah, that was rough. IBJJF. You know, and I mean, I'm I'm okay with little things like that. I don't want to sound like I want to be make the sport a pussy sport, or I don't want it to be physical. But you can't say, well, that guy slapped that guy harder, so he gets DQ'd. Right. What? Where's the balance? That right. So I slap this guy at fifty percent. He slaps me at a hundred percent. He's DQ'd. Right. Well, it's either legal or it's not. I mean, so. Well, speaking of questionable life decisions. We are now going on to our segment of shit talking white belts. So we'll go ahead and transition. Stay tuned for that horrible right. segment. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Keep watching. All right, welcome to shit talking white belts. Uh, this here is Kevin DeVry, who is our purple belt. He has PSF. Um, off, how do you say that town in Michigan? Nuego. Nuego. Nuego, Michigan. Something like that. And this is him as a white belt. He sent this in for us to. Uh, I didn't even know Michigan was a state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. Don't worry about it. They just joined the country. Mm-hmm, they did. Right. Yeah, they're a recent addition. <laughs> they did. All right, so that should be Kevin there in the white. Which one? He's should on the be... right. Kevin's on the right, right? No, oh. no. Kevin's okay. on the left. Oh, He's oh the one right into throws. the arm bar. White yeah. belts throwing arm bars? He almost did a he threw a, arm He threw bar. a half guard arm bar, though. Kevin, what are you doing? Hold on. He fights up. Though. We need Let me, to start this over. This, this yeah, is just right so that's a, much. That's, that's a, a good a transition. Half, it is a, a half, good arm bar. It's a half guard arm bar. But yeah, bar. he's got the other leg caught. You're right. Yeah, he's throwing it from half guard there, so he, he can't quite get the... It, he can't extend you can, it. You can get it. If he would have kept the arm like with his left arm and grabbed with his right arm the knee and maybe threw him over... You oh know, yeah, it just like went right the right into the almost, sweep, the yeah, flower like, sweep. Like that, that could have maybe worked. Or if you would have brought his knee in behind the arm, like I do that kind of arm bar. Yeah, that uh, would work too. That could have worked. Um, it was a pretty good transition. It, it could have he could have taken the back. It came up in the tornado sweep. Um, but coming up right here is really dangerous. Oh yeah, he totally <laughs> given up his back. Um, he comes up kind of late. But luckily, Kevin is the one in the blue gi, so he's doing the right stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This looks like Kevin takes Kevin down here. <laughs> Kevin's kicking Kevin's ass right now. No. We oh. we try not to do Kevin on Kevin. Kevin must action, have been a lot but... younger here. Yeah. Because my shoulders would hurt from just yeah, watching. This is from 2014. This is a very unique position here. Oh God, my <laughs> neck hurts now too. Does he have White belts are though? so vengeful. They're vicious. What tournament is this? Uh, it says it's a uh, EFG. I don't know exactly. Well, he's, so he's doing good here. Like the guy had the back. Kevin got him on a side, uh, so he stopped the rear naked choke or bow choke or whatever he's going for in his collar there, uh, which was good sequence. The guy on um, top. The arm bar. But you know, it's like every. And here, just let's pause it real quick. This is what happens a lot 
um, I mean, this happens at all belts. Yeah. But they freeze, right? Like they're getting so overwhelmed. This guy's throwing so much shit at him. Yeah. Right? Like this guy's been on his back. He's been choking him. He's had his arms trapped. He's falling off on an arm bar. He's trying to get back to his back. Now he's back under the arm bar. I mean, all in what? Like 30 seconds. Yeah, we're a minute in. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, and what happens when you're new is that's like, whoa, my God, I can't calculate mm-hmm. and I can't, I don't have the muscle memory to process all that. So you just kind of freeze and hold on for dear life. Right. Yeah. You know, because I mean, clearly the guy's not connected to Kevin anymore. Oh, no. I mean, it would be easy to he rip can, that arm out. He can transition and move. The guy will fall to his butt and he could square back up and be safe. But he's just kind of like in, in a little bit of like, oh my gosh, this is very overwhelming. Um, and I think that comes back down to we got to be drilling and we got to be doing a lot of flow rolling and moving. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we don't get stuck when we get I overwhelmed. feel like after he lost that initial arm bar at the very beginning, he just hasn't. Got took back him, to a position. He hasn't taken the momentum back at all. He's right. just been countering, countering. Correct. Well, I'll see where it goes. Yeah, I don't, I've never seen this match, so I don't know. I, it does look like, nope, that's the guy's head. It's not Kevin's arm. Kevin's arm's still, okay, it's in there. Oh, this looks bad. Man, Kevin's got Kevin in an arm bar pretty good here. <laughs> Kevin's oh, crossed. crossing the feet, the wrong thing to do. Now, I always get this when I talk to uh, guys, um, and I, I see them crossing their feet on that mounted arm bar, and, they, and they, they do it, and I say, don't do that. And I tell them why. It's because when you cross your feet like that, you're not holding them down right. anymore. All he's got to do is you know put his hand on that foot, and it's easy to tip it him back. It feels like you're putting pressure on him when you do that, mm-hmm. but it's like you're not. You're, you're just putting out pressure right. instead of down pressure. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I like to cross my feet when I have the side control arm bar. But I don't like to but straighten you don't my legs pressure, like he's doing. Right, you don't yeah, pinch your knees. Still. I suck the heels to my butt. Right. So yeah, you're. But you're not. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're not extending your legs out getting, right. with them crossed. So, it's almost like he's trying to break the uh, the grip or whatever. Correct. When they're defending, which is the wrong way. Correct. Um, but I don't want to give people the false sense that like crossing your feet's bad in this position, because I think it's one of my best positions when I do have the arm bar. Uh, it's just you don't look how much space. Yeah, yeah. it's just more important. There. That the, there's the nothing feet like they to, said. There's yeah. nothing holding uh, Kevin down at this point. Yeah. Uh, and we don't know what's going to happen next. This is all new to us. Let's see. So we appreciate it, Kevin. Even though Kevin's it's like he's defending Kevin. okay. It would be funny if the other guy's name was Kevin though. Yeah. And you know, I mean, you should be able to hitchhiker here too. Right. I mean, there's a lot of space. Pop there's... your head in through. Yep, the step over, but this can be really dangerous too sometimes. Yeah, you looks, do that step over. It looks kind of safe here as long as he gets his belly down. down. Now, see how his now turn he's on works. top. Now it's his turn to get the momentum back. He's got to get that hook in. Oh. The, so right there, the seatbelt control was the most important. Right. Yeah. It was there. You could have done it. Um, and instead of chasing, which is what a lot of people do, yeah, you get anxious. Um, you can you can get seatbelt and you can just pull him to you or. You could get his collar because it's in the gi right. and grab his hip and pull that to you. Um, you know, yeah, the seatbelt grip right here. If he if he grabs that up and then he starts rolling, and when, he almost when, has the hook too. And there's enough space there that you could put the hook in without putting the knee in. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, you could have he's slid a, the foot tall. in before you slid the knee and would have saved you a lot of headache. Absolutely. Um, but this is this is what's supposed to happen at white belt. So. He almost loses it. Yeah, we definitely don't want to lose that. He's, yeah, he, st- he kept, but the, he keeps he his kept pants. the collar. He kept the pant leg, too, yeah. to help him uh, land Put him a down. nice side control. We're good there. He's still inside, right? Yeah. Yep. He's, He's got the head clubbed. He's almost got the arm triangle position here if he kind of catches the arm higher. This resting. There's a neon belly. I don't know what the tournament is, so I don't know the points. Looks he like he's, he's going to get him. Yep, There's... he finally gave it to him. It took six seconds to get that. So this guy's definitely giving up the momentum now, and he's yeah. struggling to get it back. He's probably yeah, a little exhausted the, now, too. He got his so, guard back, And here's though. another thing that you can't accept that position. No. You can't. The guy didn't regard. Uh, he did. He had so much space when he regarded. Yeah. That there's no point, and I get it. Um, you know, I'm not hating on anybody because it is white belts, and I've made all these mistakes too. But that's a lot of space there that you could have just backstepped, x passed, uh, mm-hmm. continued. I mean, he's you, got no guard. He no didn't guard need to go, and, and he then, takes it. And he then takes the, the guy pass. did not need to sit up like that. Now that but was, that was great better. for Kevin. Yeah. 
Uh, that was a good good transition. I don't know why you would oh, deny. That's, that's there it that is. was right to it. Well, that he tapped good. before he even sunk yeah, it in. Too. It was yeah. done. That guy was he was tired. Yeah, he was tired. You can. I tell. mean, and and really the transition for Kevin at white belt that was smooth. Right, was smooth. Abs- yeah, to the I back. Mean, the guy right sat there. up immediately, got the back immediately. Sat when the guy's hands are floating, doing the wrong thing, and that's another thing that I want to make sure I tell you guys. Okay, your body. Your hands, your feet, everything. You need to be thinking about it. You can't mm-hmm. just let your hands be laying there. You can't just right. let your feet be laying there when you're playing jiu-jitsu. Everything has a purpose, and everything has to be be used. So here he goes with a double under. Well, I'm assuming mostly to just try to keep himself on. So if he gets yeah, maybe he to pull fall himself into the hooks deeper or to flatten him out, to pull the hooks in deeper. Maybe? You, would you immediately go? Uh, I gotta get the seatbelt right away. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, agree too. I'm, I'm going to seatbelt no matter what because uh, you know I mean luckily the hooks are in, already in. But, right. You know, like people don't realize you don't need the hooks. You can constantly just keep sitting your opponent up and chasing the back nonstop. Yeah. stop. I agree as well. And then, like we said before, he grabs that and he uses it to turn him. And then I can't believe how fast this guy taps here. I mean, yeah, but, before yeah. he even locks it in. <laughs> it's almost like he's a white belt. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like he was just plum exhausted. No, that was a good match. Yeah, Thank that you, match. Kevin, for sending us that match. That was that was good, good back and uh, forth, too. He did good. He needs to see good things, his hand bad get things and, There it and, is. And, uh, look, he just won uh, IBJJF Chicago Purple Belt this weekend. So, you know, he's, he's wow, come nice. a long way. So that was awesome. All right. So that was our segment uh, this time, and uh, that will end our episode. So uh, come like, back another time. Subscribe. Do all follow those us. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. And don't forget. Car Fox is Car Fox is watching and sponsor us. <laughs>